10 DC. This is Radio Fox. Hi, this is Tim DC from Radio Fox. Now, I've been acting for many years, but it's only a few years ago that I made the transition into movies, and it all started with The Wrong Floor. Basically, that's a British grindhouse-style action thriller, and it's set in the UK and in Spain. And how exciting, because I'm actually at its premiere right now at the Phoenix Arts in Leicester, and we are about to go to the after party at my desk bar, where I hope to chat to some of the cast and crew members. Hi, I'm Mark Hamill, and I'm the director of The Wrong Floor. Oh, I'm speaking to Mark Hamill. Mark with the C, though, yeah? Mark with the C, not uh, Luke Skywalker, as in Mark <laughs> Hamill with a K. Mark Hamill of Leicestershire, yeah? Okay, and I've got to read you something now. Something in the Leicester Mercury the other day, a quote that you uh, wrote, because you do run a footwear company in Colville, and you recently said, it was weird for the staff coming in to see se- severed limbs lying around the place. <laughs> That's right, so... Uh, well, as, that quote, as, by the way. As you know, Tindy, most of it was filmed on uh, the weekends. Um, and most of it was, f- well, uh, uh, probably about 50% of it was filmed in our footwear warehouse. Um, so you'd be filming over the weekend and it gets to Sunday night and, you you know, you, you've got props and things lying around and you think, oh, I'll, I'll leave it till Monday morning to clear up. Um, but the staff get in early and they see, you know, you might have missed something, you've not, you know, you've, you've left something around. It might be a, a severed arm or, or a yeah, head or a head or something. And it might be on somebody's workstation. <laughs> oh, lovely. <laughs> so can you tell um, sort of our listeners that don't know about The Wrong Floor, what type of film is it? Um, it's sort of a throwback film to the 80s, the 80s style um, Grindhouse films. Well, Grindhouse was really 60s and 70s, but uh, in the 80s you had lo- a lot of action films that were in a Grindhouse style, and it's, um, it's kind of a, an homage to that. So tell me about your background. What other things have you done? Well, I've, I've uh, run a recording studio in, in Leicestershire for well, about 15 years. Um, start, started back in uh, about 2003, I think. I opened Roasted Studios. I've also worked at White House Studios down in Syston. Um, so I've recorded a lot of bands, done a lot of music videos. I went more into the video side of things. Um, gathered a bit of equipment. And then when my brother started working with me at the footwear place, I said, basically, you know, the footwear thing's taking off now. Um, so I'm going to close the studio. But I've got this equipment. What should we do with it? So we just came up with the idea of making a film. So was it your idea to make a grindhouse type film? Yes, it was. Uh, it was my idea. <laughs> Look who's just walked in. Oh, yeah. Speak of the devil. And I'm joined by Carl Hamill, uh, co-writer, co-director of The Wrong Floor. Okay. So how did you find the whole experience? Absolutely loved it. From the from filmmaking point of view, it was very hard to do over three years because we actually had jobs Monday to Friday, nine till five. So trying to get the um, the talent or the actors in whenever we could on weekends at nights it was very hard but very rewarding and, yeah, and congratulations guys I really enjoyed it not to say that because I was in it I did really <laughs> enjoy it but you did it on quite a budget didn't you we did um, we scrimped and saved we asked favors we had a lot of actors in for free and we just did we did as much as we could on the budget we had but that never let, we never stopped the scope so me and Mark would sit there and we said what did you want to do for the next scene it could be a car crushing scene or it could be over in Spain. And that never, we never stopped that on the budget. We just we somehow managed it. The car crushing scene. I remember when I saw it the first time, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. it really sent shivers down my spine. I was like, oh my God, it was really very, very lifelike. Yeah, yeah well, it took, it took ages for us to find a place that would actually let us film. Okay. And especially for free. I mean, we found a place, uh, a friend of a friend said there's a car, there's a uh, car lot. And they said, yeah, you can film here. And then the day before, like, we called up and said, oh, can, you know, what time can we get there? And they said, well, you need to pay us about £800 uh, per hour before you come down. Like, whoa, we haven't, get, we haven't even got £800 for the whole budget of the film. Um, so we had to scrap that one. Scrap, you get that? Nice, I liked it. Yeah, yeah. it's a very good point. Um, and then now, the blue, these guys, um, Hull, was it? Uh, Hull or York or somewhere. York. No, no, it's York. These guys got in touch uh, with a friend of a friend and said you can use it, and they were brilliant. They, they did whatever we wanted to. If above we, and beyond. If, above and beyond. They, they said, if you want cars piled up behind where you're shooting, we'll just move cars. If you want a dog on a chain, we've got a, we've got a dog here. We'll, oh, you know, oh that, that dog was there. Dog. He was there. Yeah, he, he was the junkyard dog. Every that dog acted really well, by he, the way. He, he, did, he did actually work yeah. there, and he was the best actor in the film. Bar, uh, uh, bar uh, you, Tinder. Okay, I'm cool. Bar you. <laughs> they were fantastic. So what were your biggest challenges while you're making this movie? 
Oh, for me, for me, it was working again to the budget. With me. <laughs> and no, but no, seriously, working with Mark, it, that was a challenge from day to day, because we'd have different. We came up with the script and the idea together, but then we'd have differences of opinion on how I want to do things. Now, Mark is the main director. Yes, I say I'm co-director, but in reality, he is the director. So he would tell me, I want to do it this way. And I, I went to his expertise, his technical know-how. So if he said, I want to do it this way, sometimes I disagreed, but I had to swallow it. So it was a bit difficult for me sometimes on set. Knowing when you, that I'm always right. Knowing that you, he, Mark absolutely thinks he's always right. <laughs> and, uh, Very diplomatically said. Yeah. Um, and sometimes when you've been working late, you've worked all day, so you've worked nine till five at a normal job, and then it's nine o'clock at night, you've shot a scene, it's your fourth or fifth take, Mark's not happy with it, I'm very happy with it, and just trying to get that last scene in the can to go home, to try and go sleep and go back to work the next day. Well, it's not like we're millionaires or we're living in Hollywood. Yet. Yet. <laughs> okay, so what was the most enjoyable part of the whole filming experience? Every time we filmed, everybody had a good laugh when you, you were there Tindy you know most scenes had a lot of people in yeah. Toward, well especially from halfway to the end most scenes had a lot of people in because we got a lot of friends who wanted to come down to every scene so we just incorporated them into the scenes we, th and we, that thought, it, we thought it added production value <laughs> it, it, yeah, it well it, it, did. it did it did add production value that's why you know it, it is so big really it's a, it's a big movie for such a small budget it's because there's so many people that all became friends and you just come down together and you just have a good laugh um, and that was the most enjoyable thing so what can you say about the actors and the supporting artists oh my God. well some some yeah. of the actors since the wrong floor have gone on to bigger and better things and they're doing amazingly um, pick, pick a few out um, Jimmy yeah the guy that plays Jimmy in the first scene has got a tiny little part in the first scene he's in some uh, big feature films now um, he's doing ad like commercials left, right, and centre. He's in the big uh, O2 ad. He's the guy that stands up in the crowd um, in the O2 ad. Uh, also, you got like Rudy Barrow, who's just been in uh, Tarzan. I saw him in EastEnders. EastEnders, <laughs> EastEnders all, the time, you know. all the time. You know, he's, he's doing a, he's doing a lot of TV work, but he's just landed a, a big role with Samuel L. Jackson in um, Tarzan. But I mean, I could go on and on. There's so many people that are doing so well. Yeah. But the the actors and extras that we had. Oh my God. We started this film with me, Mark, and a couple of cousins and friends. The people we brought in added so much talent, expertise, knowledge, know-how. They, they made the film a much bigger production overall. They gave, for instance, the leading lady, Clarissa. Um, she was absolutely amazing. Uh, unbelievable. She's a theatre actress. She's, she's above and beyond every time. She, in my opinion, she made the film for me. Heather, Heather, sorry. Heather, the character Clarissa. Yeah, Clarissa. Heather Percival was a, was amazing. Um, That's a very a sort of actressy sounding name, isn't it? Heather Percival. Yes. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And she lives it to the point. She's she is above and beyond. Every time we went to scene, she knew all her lines completely. She knew the backstory. She knew what was coming next. Sometimes she would point out to us, "No, but I don't think my character would say this because of this." Me and Mark would sit there and go, uh, and we check back through the script, and she was right. She was. Yeah. She was fantastic. Okay, so what to you next? Well, we've had big news today. Big news. And Mark was going, about to make an announcement um, in, in Midas Bar. In the next half an hour, Mark will make an announcement on our next film. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's an exclusive for you, Tindy. Brace yourself. The exclusive news is that um, we've just been offered distribution in the US and Canada through uh, Cinema Epoch, who are the guys behind Samurai Cop 2. Oh, Samurai Cop and Samurai Cop 2. And... Um, for us, they are massive in America. They're giving us something that we've never dreamed we could get. Distribution in America and Canada. And then hopefully we can take that forward, go through UK and Europe. But then moving on to our next production, we have a few irons in the fire. Wow, that's amazing. The first piece of news. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. And thank you to everyone that's helped us get to that stage. And then Mark will be making an announcement later in the next 30 minutes about our next film. What? Yes. Uh, well, Can you we'll, tell we'll me anything see. about that at this moment? Or? No, because I don't know what it is. I don't know what Carl's okay. talking about. But uh, the, <laughs> there's a few ideas <laughs> floating around. But there'll definitely be a next film. Okay. And you'll definitely be in it, Tindy. If we can get you, then. Because oh. I know you're very busy. So. <laughs> Thank you very much. Is there anything you'd like to say to any of the listeners out there? Well, for Where anybody... Can they see the wrong floor? Uh, be out on DVD. 
Well, we don't know about the UK. We've only got UK, um, US and Canada at the moment, so we don't know when the UK DVD will be out. But what you can do is we've got a screening at uh, Colville in May. Uh, that's at the Century Theatre. We've got a screening in um, on the East Coast, not Skegness, uh, Mablethorpe. Yeah, Mablethorpe. Mablethorpe, I think that's in August. Uh, and there'll be a few more screenings around the country, but basically check out www.therongfloor.com. Hello, I'm MJ Simpson. I play the character of Dr. Logan, and I'm also an associate producer on the film. Okay, mad scientist. Would you agree that that's a accurate description of Dr. Logan? Or? I like to think he's not so much mad. He's just very, very annoyed. And very eccentric as well. He is, yeah. He, he's, um, he's got utter contempt for all these gangsters around him. Um, he thinks they're thugs, they're idiots. He, as far as he's concerned, although they're employing him, he's using them to fund his research into whatever it is he's doing. And then we see this little insight that he's got these mad sort of mm, crypto-fascist idea that he's going to take over the world with Hayes. He's clearly loopy. <laughs> Um, on the other hand, it did occur to me, halfway through making this, that I'd actually kept my wedding ring on all the time, so I like to think there's a Mrs. Logan somewhere at home who's got no idea what he does. He just comes home every day. Have a nice day at work, dear. Yes, have a nice day at work. But he's not coming home from this one. Uh, this, this character is, is quite a character. How was it playing Dutch Logan? It was enormous fun. I mean, it really was. This, this is one of those characters where you, you can't sort of overact. I mean, he's, he's quite clearly n- not right in the head. He's got all these crazy ideas. So it was an absolute joy to do. And um, Mark was really good. Um, we, we got together at the start and we went through the script and sort of tweaked and, and, uh, uh, some of the lines because I, I, I do script writing as well. So I, I sort of looked at them, just polished it up a little bit. Um, and he was really open to people coming up with new ideas ideas um, and then right at the end I mean not giving anything away but I, I don't make it to the end of the film and originally I was going to be whacked over the head with a, a paperweight and I thought well that, that's not much fun so we wanted something a little bit bloodier um, you did go out in style, didn't you? We, we did, and they were throwing blood on, on my lab coat. And I said, look, you know, give me a glass of that, get ready to film, because I'm not holding this in my mouth for very long. And then just, ooh, and there's this money shot of me just spurting this blood out of my mouth as, the, as the, I think it's a letter opener goes in. That's what you want is a good death scene. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> well, what an emotion that did surprise me. I was laughing quite a lot throughout the whole film. It, it, does that make me a sadist or some kind of mad person? Or? No, no, this doesn't make you a bad person at all. It is a comedy. It's a, it's a mashup. It's a comedy. It's a gangster film. It's an action film. It's a horror film. It's all these things bolted together. And I think that's its strength, you know? People make, they say, oh, we'll make a zombie film or we'll make a gangster film. But this has got everything mashed in together. And I think that it's, it's unique appeal. There's everything there. And, it, and it's very retro. I mean, you can see from the um, all sort of fake bits of, of a VHS dropout that have been added in post-production. Um, you know, Mark spent his childhood watching sort of third generation VHS copies of dodgy you know, action films and, and, and sci-fi films. And this is his love letter to them. And I, I think it's brilliant. And I'm really, really proud to be involved with it because it's been enormous fun. Oh, thank you so much. So where to next for you? Um, well, since this, I've done a couple of other bits. I'm not an actor. I've got a day job. So it's, it's just a hobby. It's just fun. Some people, you know, take it more seriously. I'd love to do more of it, but I have to, you know, fit it around what I've got. Um, so, you know, there's not a huge filmmaking scene around Leicester, but it's starting to build up a little bit. So, you know, I keep my eye out on the adverts, and if there is something, and it's, it's a small supporting role that I think I can do, then I'll take it. So there was a, there was a, little, fil- a little thriller shot in Mount Sowell uh, last year called Do Something Jake, and had quite a nice supporting role in that. That's in post-production at the moment. Um, mostly, and, and also my son's in this in a, in a couple of bits. The, the little boy in the laser quest scene who says, cool, and that got quite a good laugh. When he oh, blows the guy's head my off. God. <laughs> So your little son blew somebody's head off in this movie. And how old was he at the time? He was 10 then. He's 12 now. Um, and I was really pleased he got a big laugh. Um, what did his mother have to say about that then? His, his, his mother is fine. He, he loves acting. Um, and it's really, you know, I got into it because of him. So uh, unfortunately, he's not old enough to come and see it tonight. Um, oh, yes. But uh, I'll, I'll show him some clips for when I get home. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's clearly grossly unsuitable for a 12-year-old. On the other hand, it is suitably gross for a 12-year-old. So you know, um, he, he'll, be, he'll be happy to, to see some clips of it. But he, he should be in bed by now. Hello, my name's Ron Hamill. I play Mr. Marseille in The Wrong Floor. Oh, I'm talking to Mr. Marseille. Oh, you're not going to put me in the boot, are you? You be careful. Whatever you ask me, you be careful. Okay, I've been warned. Right, so tell me about your character in the film. My character, I actually produce 
a very bad substance called haze, which is going to change the world. It's a very powerful drug, not very nice. You're not a very nice person in the film either, are you? Well, I don't like people getting in my way, put it that way. <laughs> uh, the irony of the situation is because you seem like a lovely gentleman. You seem like a really nice guy. Okay, is it? are you a really nice guy in real life or is there a bit of Mr. Marseille in you? No, I'm a bad guy. <laughs> I live in Spain, I'm a bad guy. Anybody that lives in Spain has got to be bad. <laughs> right, so tell us. So Carl is your son, he was yes. the main actor, and Mark is the director, he's your other son. And you, you said a few sort of phases in that, and, and I was like, oh, okay, how can he say that, that's his son? I thought it was hilarious. I've always spoken to him like that. We're like three brothers, really. They're like, they're like brothers to me. They're, I speak to them like that. We've worked together, we've worked together since they were kids. They've worked together even to this day, to this moment. Okay, so what was it like taking direction off Mark? Hard. You're like, I'm the father. <laughs> Swearing and saying things that you don't normally come up with, you might not believe, but you've got to do what the director says. So how did your um, other half take this? She was, she was wonderful. She couldn't believe all the swearing. She couldn't believe, all, even with her sons and me, we, we got a real bollocking, to tell you the truth. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's in the game, isn't it? That's the film game. That's what you do. You have to do it. So how do you feel now? You've, you've done the congratulations that the, the, the film's completed now. Thank you very much. I'm glad it's over and I hope I'm dead. I hope I don't have to come back from Spain to do some more. I really do. <laughs> Was that really your villa in Spain then? Yes, it's our villa in Spain, yeah. We've lived Ooh. there for eight years. We've lived there for eight years. Oh, so you've got a villa in Spain. Oh, now I've got all these things going in my head. I think, okay, I'm going to be very nice to you, Mr. Marseille. Sorry, no, no, I mean, Mr. Hamill. I will be very nice you to you. You can come any time you want. Seriously, you can come any time you want. Can I take you up on that? <laughs> So, where, what does the future hold for you now? I Any don't more wanna, acting roles? No more acting roles. I've been asked to act in different things. I don't want to act. I want to go to Spain with my wife and enjoy each other. My name is Manoj Anand and I'm uh, an actor and a uh, crew member of The Wrong Floor. Okay, what characters do you play in The Wrong Floor? Oh, that's a good question. I play about 11 characters. If I can remember from the top of my head, I play a uh, policeman, a uh, toxic hobo, uh, fireman, um, and mo oh, I can't remember the other characters. And many others, many eh? Others, yeah. And I've got a confession to make now, yeah. because when I went on to Wrong Floor, the first day I was there, I met Manoj, and he really inspired me to become so involved, and he was very passionate about the whole project. How's it been for you? It's been absolutely fantastic. Um, by doing this project, I've actually gone on to do other projects, and it's uh, inspired me to do more acting work. So it's, it's been inspirational, more than anything. Okay, so why should we go and watch The Wrong Floor? Because it's worth it. <laughs> it's brilliant. You will enjoy it. It's entertaining. It's fun. It's full of laughter. A lot of, you know, if you like gore, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. You know, it's just entertainment, pure entertainment. So what's your funniest moment whilst you're filming? Oh, while I was filming. Um, I think... Uh, one of the most memorable moments. Memorable then. moments. Uh, I think day one, because cause it was the first day... It was, I remember it very well. Day seven, September 2013. You were on set with us, so and uh, we had a obviously couple, you've got to remember that one. You have to remember that. Uh, but yeah, that was the most memorable day. The f doing day one on it. Have you got anything to say about the Hamill brothers? Hamill brothers, they are absolutely brilliant. They are they are inspiring. Uh, they do a lot for the community. They've done so much for the actors or the actresses. Uh, you know, they've got everybody involved within Leicestershire. And it's great for the county. Uh, and, you know, they're flying the flag for the county, as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, I want to carry on. I want to carry on doing work for them. I'm Suave Flavor, and I played uh, Armed Response and a Toxic Hobo. Oh, lovely. <laughs> I'm Sarah Cox, and I played a VIP and a prostitute. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. So you've been supporting artists in the wrong floor, yeah? Yes, yes, it's uh, been a really good journey for us, uh, three years in the making, but um, the premiere was really good and we've pleased we've seen it, the final um, finished product, yeah, it's been really good. And you were also a boxer in there, weren't you? I did forget about that, yeah, I played a boxer in the opening scenes. Yes, when I first met Suave, he looked very different to how he does this evening, yeah, very different. <laughs> yeah, in a tuxedo from going... Uh, from a boxer. <laughs> like you had all these things on your face and you were like all oh, really beaten yeah, was, up. And, I was yeah. pretty battered in it, wasn't I? Yeah. So how was playing a prostitute for you then? 
Do you know what? It was really good fun, but I don't know if you remember on that day, it was Baltic. I think it was sleeting at one point, and yeah. I literally had no clothes on. You were very, very brave, I must say. If it weren't for the take tan, I think I would have been a bit blue. My legs were the warmest part, I think. <laughs> Thigh high boots. Oh, that, was a, that was actually quite a good day because I was there as well that day, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you were standing in front of a fire, yeah. I seem to remember, so you were nice and warm. Yeah, it was rubbing it in, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, where to next for you guys then? Well, I'm working on Rossi Boys. I've been co-writing with Marcus. And uh, I've got a couple of roles in the pipeline as well, big ones, coming off. So are you still doing any of your singing? Um, I do occasionally, yeah. I've done the soundtrack for Rossi Boys, and we've got other artists working on that as well. So, yeah, I'm very much still involved with my music, yeah. Oh, fabulous. How about you, Sarah? Wow, I've got quite a busy full-time job, so I'm keeping an eye out on Ross's boys and little bits that keep coming up and also see what Mark and um, Carl are going to do in the future and hopefully sort of tap in a little bit there. Sort of like a bit of a hobby, really, just a bit of fun. Yeah, I'd love to work with the guys again because um, it was a really nice um, vibe on set, you know, easy to work with guys, well-directed, you know, and it was fun, really, wasn't it? Yeah. Working yeah, with the cast fun. and crew. Don't you just feel like you've made so many friends and it's just so nice yes. to meet up with everyone? And, Do you know what? I've made so many friends on the uh, wrong floor and we're still in contact today. Yeah. Sarah, for instance, yourself, yeah, Tindy, you know, and it's it's been really nice to... Um, we've kept the contact going, yeah. really, haven't we? And um, it's been fun, yeah. yeah. All I can say is I look forward to working on the next project with you guys, then. Yes, I think we've just become one big family, haven't we? Yeah, so we're all going to get together and we all meet up and it's lovely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's great. And yeah. the nice thing about the wrong floor, it's um, they got people from all across the country. Suffolk, you know, London, Milton Keynes, and people have travelled from all over. And uh, that's been really nice as well, yeah. isn't it? And do you not feel like a sense of pride as well that it's all taking part in Leicestershire? Well, it's nice to put Leicester on the map. I mean, it, uh, Leicester has got a lot of um, history behind it, you know, and with Beverly, you know, and um, yeah, it's been really and, good. And Leicester football as well. Yeah, they're doing really good at the moment, you know, and I'm quite proud of that, being a Leicester person, you know. Are you a Leicester supporter then? Do you know what? I don't really um, support Leicester, unfortunately. Yeah. I support Chelsea. Oh, God, <laughs> get out of here, get out of here. I'm uh, Pete Natter. Smiler in the film The Wrong Floor. Um, my tagline is "It's good to be bad." So I play um, the main the gang boss's uh, henchman, as you say, the head henchman, as they used to call me. You know, I just love acting. I love because it gives me a chance to meet with great new friends. You know, all sorts of people, from various backgrounds, and it's just fun. It really. And this shoot, The Wrong Floor, actually was so much fun to do so I really enjoyed now Pete you're quite deceptive aren't you because you come across in the film he comes across as absolutely rotten and it's good to be bad that is quite something you're a horrible person in the film and but you're a really gentleman in real life what can I say <laughs> yeah I know because all my friends keep saying you're nothing like that but They've seen me on, um, you know, they've seen a few clips on the wrong floor as well as other films. I do come out as a, you know, absolute rotter, but I'm nothing like that. Yeah, I know people say that. Why, do, why do you always get those? Well, I say, you act really well, don't you? Yeah, um, it is. You know, I do, I do act. It's all acting. I'm nothing like that. You know, believe. How was it playing a gangster, the lead henchman in this movie? Oh, it was fun. Like I said, there's no, nothing like being on film going around just killing people and, oh, yeah. and it must uh, be amazing yeah <laughs> and the name smiler is because i smile after i kill someone <laughs> that's where the name comes from okay <laughs> <laughs> so what did you think at first when it was like grindhouse horror type movie what did, what were your views um, well you see i actually thought i was doing a music video <laughs> music video <laughs> yeah i i for, for the role uh, when i applied for the role they wanted to do a music video the director, he he had a studio, and he he was involved with bands, and a band wanted him to make a music video, so I went along to do that, and apparently the clip was going to be, you know, merged into the uh, clip into the film, so that that's how it started. I I thought I was doing a music video. I didn't realize I was. That's how they lured you in, eh? That's, it. that's how they lured me in, and I ended up, you know. So basically, they said it's day one. So I've. I've virtually been on the film right from the st uh, first day of shooting. Wow, 
and it's been three years now hasn't it it has it has been three years since i um, what's been the most challenging bit for you so far most challenging bit i'll be honest there really wasn't a challenge I've, I've not found you know that's the way i am maybe i've i've enjoyed every second very of adaptable way. then yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and i got to meet you yeah. and i met all sorts of people you know all sorts of people from all over the country yeah. and that's that's the fun part and um so what else can we look out now from you? From me? Um, I should feature in a film called ID2, um, Shadwell Army, which apparently is a sequel for a film that was done back in, I think, in the 90s, early 90s. So you can look out for me in that. Um, and I'm just now looking for, you know, new roles. So um, I've done a lot of short films which are all out on online. So, yeah, hopefully I want to get a good comedy role. <laughs> yeah, so you know, away from the well, good. It doesn't to involve you like blowing yeah. people's brains off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, nice comedy role, even a rom com. You never know. Have you got anything to say to our listeners out there? Oh yeah, go and watch the wrong floor. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> I mean, you'll enjoy it as much as we enjoyed making it. Yeah. Tim DC. This is Radio Fox.